You didn't get a Miller Lite? No, what's the difference? Miller Lite has more taste. <laughs> I don't care, I just got one of these. Yeah, well, that's the second unmanly thing you've done today. What was the first? It's only gonna be two days. I know! I can't do this! I can't do this! That was unmanly. Man up. Choose a light beer with more taste. Grab a triple hops brewed Miller Lite with that great Pilsner taste. Wait, wait, this is the best part. I can't do <laughs> The Rock, 106.9 WCCC. It's Caroli broadcasting from Upper on the Rocks in downtown Hartford. It is WCCC live with Smile Empty Soul. It's here for the guys. And today it is brought to you by Miller Lite. And uh, I want to welcome you guys to uh, Hartford. How are you guys? Good. Great. Good. Yeah. All good. Everybody happy? Very Good, good, good. Now, this is one of those unusual moments where we do one of these WCCC live events in the actual room where you're going to be playing later tonight. Usually we move to another room and stuff, but was this a bit of a, um, you know, kind of a challenge doing the acoustic thing and the setting up for the electric thing all in the same room at the same time? You could ask our crew. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been for them, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so tell me, uh, tell me about uh, the latest album, Threes, right? Name of the album? Tell me about, uh, you know, the, it was released back in the spring, I believe, correct? Yeah, and, back um, in May. So tell me about, uh, you know, the writing of it, the recording of it, did the process go smoothly? Tell me a little bit about the new, latest album. Well, it was, it was a great time. I mean, you know, we, uh, we had come off of the road from uh, our consciousness album cycle and took a short break, got back together, started jamming, came up with some tunes pretty pretty quickly and easily and I uh, went in the studio with a buddy of ours, Eddie Wool, producer, and knocked out the record real fast and easy and it was just a smooth, nice, fun process, you know, it was a great time. <laughs> There's a line in the uh, single Afterlife, and I don't know if I'm going to get it exactly right, but it's something like, uh, never get tired of the radio or something like that, right? And I love that because I'm on the radio, right. you know? And so, uh, you know, tell me about like, did radio ever influence you back in the day, like when you were a kid? Is that where you kind of like discovered new bands and stuff? Is that where you first heard bands was on the radio? Or was it more going to music stores and seeing albums and like, oh, I got to check this band out? Hmm. For me, it was a mix of both. I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. for sure. Actually, where, I, where we grew up, where I grew up, at least, like we didn't have really good radio stations. <laughs> or we, I, maybe we just lived, you know, too far outside of L.A. and we didn't get the good L.A. stations. So it was more like friends turning you on to good music, for me at least. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to Blockbuster Music and sit there yeah, do you and open up whatever music? disc you wanted to. And Blockbuster Music, no. I'm very old. And it, it was a record store that you could go into, grab any CD you wanted, go up to the booth, they'll let you listen to it as long as you want. No one bugs you, they give you headphones. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. This was back in the day. So This was, was like 90s. It was groundbreaking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was groundbreaking, yeah. Well, yeah, I remember like, you know, listening stations at uh, different music stores. Yeah, same thing. You'd put the headphones on and you could listen. That mm -hmm. was cool, but like for me, it was more about seeing an album cover and being like, wow, like what is this band all about? And then taking and sometimes you know it would be a miss. You would take it home and be like, "Well, that sucked." Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But other times, like an Iron Maiden album cover, for example, you see that and you're like, "Whoa!" First time you hear "Number of the Beast," something like that, and you're like, "Wow!" Now that paid off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it it matches up to your expectation based on the album cover. Mm -hmm. Take us back to like um, 2003. Um, Bottom of a Bottle comes out. It's a huge hit for you guys, um, and that was a much different time in the music business than it is now even. Mm -hmm. um, compare the differences, at least for you guys, what it was like then and what it's like today. Money? No <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> Much bigger difference, right? Well, back then, people were buying singles. They were buying yeah. albums and, and not uh, downloading them or pirating them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you were able to sell more product, right? It's funny because when we came out, Napster had just had just been a big issue and uh, had taken a big chunk out of album sales already. So album sales were down, but they were still at a, at a place where, you know, you could, you could still make some money and do your thing. Whereas now it's just completely, the bottom has fallen out and it's just laying on the ground. So how do bands, you know, generate their income now? Uh, obviously touring, but is it touring? Is it merch? Is it album sales? Does it have to be all all phases hit. Where do you generate your biggest dollars from now? 
That's yeah. it. <laughs> yes. to, to the answer to your question is yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anything and everything, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like it was, you know, even 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, we got to be out here on the road, you know, meeting people and, you know, introducing new people to our music. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tell me about a guy named uh, Jason Flom and what he did for your career. Um, I mean, he's, you know, his name is legendary within the music business. A lot of the bands know him and, you know, he helped a lot of bands along the way. But what did he do for uh, Smile Empty Soul? He signed us to our first, uh, our first big record deal when he was the head of Lava Atlantic. Um, that was the label that we signed with. <clears throat> and they re released our first record with Bottom of a Bottle and Silhouettes and some other songs on it. So, you know, he gave us our first, our first real deal to release an album. And over the years, I mean, so many bands have talked about different label issues that they've had and stuff, and you guys have had your share of them as well, correct? Yeah, we've had <laughs> probably more than most. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I always find that interesting because so many bands, before they're signed, that that's what they're striving for. Like, i got to get that record deal. And then so many bands have so many issues with labels and maybe managers or you know royalties and publishing. And there's so many different factors that I think the unsigned band doesn't take into consideration. So... In, in this day and age, is the record deal as important as it was in 2003 or no? No. Not at all. It's, it's, it almost doesn't even really matter. I mean, it, essentially, it's all about just having good music. And if Phil. you're able to just put out good music and then, you know, have somebody behind you with some sort of money that can get you guys on the road and start touring, you know, it's all about... It's all about instant gratification and YouTube videos, you know? Right. So. Right. If you have the song, it will be exposed one way. People no. will find it on YouTube in different places, right? So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, well, it's kind of different how things have changed. Where back then, you needed the label to get the recording of the album and then promote it and put it out there into the public. But now you can kind of do it on your own. You can. It just costs a lot of money. But, <laughs> you know, even if you get signed these days, a, a, a label is not going to put the amount of money into you that it takes these days to break open a new band. So they'll probably sign you and put only, you know, a small amount of money into you and just see if anything starts opening up. And if not, they'll just forget about you. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's very not good. Okay. Or they try to get you to do one of those 360 deals, right? Well, where that, well that's what they do automatically for, for new bands these days is the 360 deal, which is where they not only collect most of the album sale money, but they actually get a portion of your uh, your guarantees from touring, your merchandise, and all other avenues of making money. It's a 360 rape deal. <laughs> and it's unfortunate that bands have to sign things like that, you know, when it's like, that's the source of where the music comes from, but, yeah. So is there any benefit to that, to a new band, or no? Just hopefully breaking through and trying to establish yourself and then renegotiating whatever contracts and getting out of that and making a better situation for yourself mm -hmm. in the future but it's 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 effing more bands mm -hmm. right than than it's helping you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah the music uh, industry has always had uh, you know this dark you know darkness about it where like oh man it's such a brutal industry but it, it seems to be getting even darker with you know, downloading and then the labels try to find different ways to make money and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that day to day, what gets you guys through is doing the live performing, right? Yeah. Totally. This is what we love to do, you know, Hitting every day, travel, you know, hundreds of miles to play shows, you know. And so yeah. it's this being in the action of playing that's the best part. So, well, let's uh, let's get to the best part. <laughs> Smile Empty Soul is here to do uh, some acoustic songs for us. It's WCCC Live, brought to you by Miller Lite. And uh, let's hear it for Smile Empty Soul. Yeah. 